Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 230. What is it? 38 of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. Uh, thank you to my resident fact checker, Keelan. Uh, that probably means it's episode 240, judging by his fact check skills. Don't believe him. Uh, welcome to the show. Right off the bat, Melbourne. Uh, I have a, a, a little show, uh, a little split bill. I'm part of a dark comedy special with two other brilliant acts. I'm going to be performing at The Rubber Chicken uh, with Chris Waynehouse and Matt O'Neill, two of my uh, top comics from Melbourne. If you really like the dark stuff, uh, it's a little split bill. It's going to be a fun show. If you want to check that out, go to rubberchicken.com.au. It is this Saturday. Tickets are very limited. Uh, use code Lewis Spears for a discount. You get $6 off your ticket. Lewis Spears. All one word, no lowercase, none of that bullshit. Lewis Spears, rubberchicken.com.au. Uh, get your tickets. That's going to fill up fast as fuck, boy. Uh, make sure you use my code too because then I get more money, all right? Uh, so, uh, welcome to the show. What else did I want to say? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, next next episode of the podcast is, uh, look, it's, it's going to be a bit of a gamble here. It really is because next episode of the podcast, uh, I'm actually recording today's episode on Tuesday and we have to record next week's episode on a Thursday. And if we don't do it on Thursday, it's straight to the Westgate. And I'm going to be in Gold Coast, so I'm going to have to fly home early, go straight to the Westgate. I might have to just to save time, you know? Not that, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that because that might put me on a no-fly list. That's not going to happen. In fact, we might even censor that. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, well, that's the first time I've ever censored anything, but it is in the in the interest of not getting cancelled, just being able to fly, uh, which I am looking forward to. Um, which, which, you know, why, why is it that I have to be careful with what I say when it comes to the airline industry but the CEO of Virgin can literally just call for the death of regular people. Uh, what did she? What did she bring up? I love all of the headlines. The headlines say uh, Virgin CEO uh, calls for open borders, even if some people die. Now, I think first of all, uh, look, I don't agree with her opinion, but I would like to just. To, I have an issue with the headline. What she said is terrible. I don't know why we need to talk about whether or not she's had sex, all right? Her being a virgin has nothing to do with her terrible opinion. I just think that that needs to be left out of it. She's a woman. Whether she's had sex or not is irrelevant to the issue, but apparently this woman has never fucked before. She's a virgin CEO. What, what, uh, what company is she, is she the CEO of? Only fans. Oh no, Virgin. Virgin Airlines. Uh, Jane, Jane, Jane Hardlicker. Yeah, she's not a virgin. Uh, Jane Hardlicker says that COVID will be part of the community. We will become sick with COVID and it won't put us in hospital and it won't put people in dire straits because we'll have a vaccine. Some people may die, but it will be way smaller than with the flu. All right, Dr. Hardlicker, thank you very much for your opinion. Never, ever, ever listen to a CEO when it comes to public health, all right? Just don't. If they're the... If, if, if we're, why the fuck would we listen to the CEO of an airline when it comes to whether or not we should open our borders? That's like a fucking guy who sells hot dogs going, yeah, I reckon the best way to cure COVID is to eat hot dogs, bro. That's, the, that's how we're going to get around this. Why is it that all these fucking evil CEOs just can't let us sort this shit out? You know what's going to happen if we open up the borders? We're all going to have to get that AstraZeneca stuff. We'll be full of blood clots and then, and then that'll take us out. No, guys, it's all right. Get your vaccine. My mum got it, uh, and she's fine. She was very sick straight up the day after she got incredibly sick, uh, and she was like, man, it made me realise like how scary COVID would be is getting that uh, and feeling sick. But she feels fine now, so I don't think it's a... I don't think it's, it's... It's definitely concerning, and I think that the concerns about it are like realistic and fine, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think that I'm going to get it because I want to fucking too. I want to go back to normal, bro. I want to enter that lottery. Why, why isn't there a lottery? Why is there's a fucking lottery in the America, in, Amer in the Americas? Uh, some city is having a million dollar lottery. You get the vaccine shot and they enter you into a lottery. Why can't, why can't we have that in Australia? I mean, I understand it's because everyone's probably just going to do it because they think it's the right thing to do. But also, why not sweeten the deal a little bit? You know, how about this? You get vaccinated and you go into the drawer to take 
uh, Jane Hard- Hardlicker's virginity. That would be quite... I would enter that. She's she's almost past her prime, but she's still there, you know? So uh, I think I think that what we should do in, in terms of our COVID response is we should just put every CEO of an airline in charge and they'll go, yeah, so you can get vaccinated, but everyone in Melbourne, your vaccination center is in Sydney and everyone in Sydney, your vaccination center is in Melbourne. You have to catch a flight. That's how it's going to be. So good on her. That's great. I'm going to the Gold Coast. Speaking of anti-vaxxers, I'm going to the Gold Coast where that shit <laughs> lives. And uh, hopefully I won't get, hopefully I won't get uh, King hit. I'm going, I'm going for uh, my worst nightmare, which is a music festival. Um, and, and despite the fact that I'm being paid to be there, it still is my worst nightmare. You know, like there's, there's, I don't think I've, I've been to a music festival once. The Red Hot Chili Peppers were there. I love that band. I fucking hated the festival. It was horrendous. What am I doing? Oh, I didn't hit record. See, and that's why Keelan's here. There you go, mate. You've earned your hourly wage, our hourly wage. That is another three dollars in your pocket. Um, yeah, a, a, a music festival is like my worst nightmare. I I just can't like, a, especially like a music festival in the Gold Coast. So not only is it in the Gold Coast, but it's also a music festival. It's going to be hot as fuck. I'm going to have to talk to people who are just off their head, uh, and and I'll be more concerned about them dying of dehydration than I will of an of a of like an overdose. Um, I'm I, who who is playing at this festival? I'm sure I, I sh- actually. I sh- Listen, listen, Esso, that's all right. You know, I'll listen to that. You know what I'm going to do at this festival? This is this is seriously what I'm going to do. Luke's really excited. I'm going with Luke. He's probably going to go and watch all of the bands. I reckon I'm going to chill in the VIP area. I'm going to scope out where the air conditioner is, and I'm going to park under it. Who's playing? Peking Duck, the Jawbreakers. I didn't know Greeley was performing. Alice in Wonderland, uh, Stace Cadet. Who are these people? Is this just... Oh, Dune Rats, I know them. Amity Affliction, I've heard of them. And the chats. Okay, I will be watching the chats. That's sick. I'm, I'm excited to see the chats scream. You're lying? No chats. All right, well, this is going to suck. No chats? Bullshit! Um, so, look, that's, that's what's happening. We're, so, next week's uh, podcast will be pre-recorded. So, but the episode after that is going to be fire because I will have been at a music festival for two days and Gold Coast for a week. So you guys know what's coming. Just stay tuned for that. Um, what have I been doing uh, recently? I've, uh, uh, I, I've been, I mean, laughing at um, what I think is really funny is Harry Styles is in a dress again. Oh my God. Harry Styles wore a dress. I, at, at what point is Harry Styles wearing a dress going to become boring? Because it seems like every time he does it, uh, people lose their mind and it becomes like this giant statement against toxic masculinity that, that, that goes, every time Harry Styles puts on a dress, people are like, see, men, you can wear anything you want to. And I'm here to tell you today, uh, I, as Lewis Spears, am here to say to all men, no. You cannot pull off a dress. Only some of you can, all right? Harry Styles can pull off a dress. You put Harry Styles, who's an incredibly good-looking person, who's incredibly famous in a, and used to be in the biggest boy band in recent history, put him in a dress wearing makeup on the cover of Vogue with, with good lighting and Photoshop to hell and back. That looks good. If you put... Damo from the pub in a dress. He looks like he's going to stab you at a train station under a bridge. Not all men can pull off a dress. I am sick of the fucking argument that is made uh, with the evidence of attractive people. Attractive people can wear whatever the fuck they want and they're still hot. You ever see a guy in a movie who is like playing a homeless person, but the guys like Brad Pitt or Bradley Cooper, like they, they, they just dressed up in the most despicable, disgusting clothes that the wardrobe person could find. And then they'll get posted to like a fashion mood board. Oh, wow. Look how fashionable this guy is. He's wearing sweatpants and boots. If I wore sweatpants and boots, I would look like I'm about to expose myself on the train. That is an exclusively for handsome dudes outfit, sweatpants and boots. So when Harry Styles puts on a dress and then TikTok teenagers yell at 
all men going, see, you can wear what you want. The answer is actually no, you can't. You need to dress for what you look like and not everybody looks like Harry Styles. That's like when you see like like women wearing men's clothes. Like you put fucking who, who's that model with the with the tits? M Ratatouille. You could put her in a garbage bag and she would look good. You put fucking Jess from the call center in a garbage bag. She looks homeless. Attractive people can wear what they want. You can't, and it's it's time to accept that reality. Harry Styles isn't destroying toxic masculinity. He's just being hot in a different outfit, as always. That's what I think. So, look, if you want to look good in a dress, you are going to need the assistance of literally Vogue. Unless you're trans, in which case you're beautiful. <laughs> H3H. H. We're getting through all of the, the, the current news topics because i got I got to save what I've been up to this week for next episode. So we are going through all of the news stuff. Um by the way, thank you very much to everyone with all the feedback uh, on, the, on the last few episodes of the podcast. I've uh, been really enjoying reading what you guys think. Uh, I think that the way that we're doing it is a lot better. I feel like it's still true to Spearhead Sundays because I don't. Uh, neither of us want Keelan to be like you know fifty percent of the show or like a recurring voice. Lord knows it's hard enough hanging out with him all day, uh, and and just having to talk to him for an hour would not only destroy the podcast, it would just destroy my mind. So <laughs> that's definitely not happening. And he he is going to be more of more of a more of a studio audience, not not like a friends studio audience. You know, like he's not going to laugh at everything, but every now and then I will say something that may tickle. His his fancy like that tickle his fancy tickle his fancy you never know what he's going to laugh at and and that's i think adds a new exciting element to the show and best of all you don't have to talk to him to elicit that you know it's been about 12 minutes and all he's added is laughter isn't that right Shh. <laughs> so uh I'm a, i appreciate reading all the nice feedback we are trying to build this show up again because I, I feel like uh, it can be quite big I, and uh, that's what we want to do. So I appreciate you guys uh, checking it out and coming back. I thought that after like so much time not doing an episode at all, people were like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to listen to Luke and Lewis. This guy cannot do a podcast by himself. Uh, and and, the, and the, the answer is yes, that you're right. I can't. So uh, this is how it is. Um, and, uh, and if I don't rec record this episode on Thursday, Keelan will get out the stick. So on Thursday morning, if you can just uh, DM Keelan on Instagram, don't forget the stick. Uh, I should <laughs> record the next episode. Um, well, this episode won't be out on Thursday. Oh, okay. So th th this episode that I'm recording is not going to be out on Thursday. So uh, how about on Sunday, if uh, the episode, if next Sunday... <laughs> The episode doesn't come out. DM Keelan to get the stick and punish me for my failures, as I deserve. Um, hey, it could be worse, man. You could be shaving my ass. Uh, this is also uh, another thing that's, that's quite funny. H3H3 is getting sued by Triller. Oh, what a headline. H3H3 is getting sued because of the Jake Paul fight. Apparently he talked about it on one of his podcasts and flashed up some of the footage, like seconds of the footage of Jake Paul knocking the other guy out. And now Triller wants to sue Ethan Klein for $50 million, which is just awesome. I think that's what we need more of is just like giant corporations who at the same time would not be profitable without social media influences, but also want to just like, put uh, shackles around their necks, you know? It's like, hey, Triller, if, if, if people like Ethan Klein were not talking about your fucking fight, you wouldn't have the budget to sue them. So th this idea that these multi-million dollar corporations, it's a social media company, wants to like demonize and villainize and try and sue people from the, the the commentary YouTube culture community for talking about their fucking event like they want us to do and then turn around and go, oh, we'll use 30 seconds of it that was on Twitter everywhere, so we're suing you for $50 million. is just fucking insane. Uh, and also, it's just fair use too. Like, like me playing some of the footage and then talking about it is just textbook definition of fair use. So what they're just trying to do is swing their dick and scare Ethan into uh, like just bending over for it, which he's never done. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, lawsuit goes out. 
we have this. Uh, what's interesting is the judge, this is what Ethan Klein said, the judge threw out the lawsuit and they only refiled against one person. Oh, so they threw out the original lawsuit. Was that the one where they were just suing everyone? That's so funny. Like Triller comes out and goes, hey, if you if you don't give us $50 right now, we're going to sue 200 million people. And the judge was like, yeah, fuck you. You can't do that. I, I wonder how much that worked though, because I would argue that they knew that was going to get thrown out. They were just scaremongering, because they, they were fear-mongering, because they were just saying like, oh, pay us $50 by this date or we will sue you. I wonder how many people just would have panicked and gone, fuck, and sent them $50. Yes, Jake Paul owns some of Triller. I, I imagine he would have gotten ec an equity deal for his fights. So Ethan's saying that he thinks there's like a conspiracy against them. I, yeah, okay, well that's that's not that crazy because Ethan's been super vocally against Jake Paul, who who I love, by the way. Uh, I love uh, 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 Jake Paul. I love Ethan, but, I, but I've... Completely reversed my decision on Jake Paul, and and I and I think my my ultimate opinion on Jake Paul is is both of these things at the same time. He's an absolute scummy piece of shit dog cunt, but you gotta love him because he's just doing it on purpose. Now he's just open about it, and I I there's something about a guy who's a piece of shit, and instead of trying to hide it or change, he goes, you know what? That's who I am. I have to respect it because Logan Paul did the opposite. He was a bit of a scummy piece of shit. And then he went, you know what, guys? I've listened. I understand. And I'm going to do my best to change. And he, he stepped back and then he did a lot of work on himself. He reformed who he is and his personality and his content. And he came out the other side as a positive force for the world. I would like to call Logan Paul a coward because I wouldn't do that shit at all. Sorry about that. Keelan didn't notice that the SD card was full. So this this operation isn't faultless and I would like everyone to comment on the spits on his Instagram account, get the stick, so that I remember on Sunday to get the stick from Keelan uh, and use it appropriately. But yeah, I look, there's there's I just can't respect a man who listens to feedback and changes for the better. Because <laughs> everyone does that. That's what you should do. Boring, good on you, but nah. What I really like is Jake Paul seeing the incredibly negative feedback and going, nah, I'm just going to make him more angry. That is funny. That no matter what you think about the guy, being called a piece of shit and then acting even more like one is very funny. And uh, at the end of the day, I think the world needs more chaos. Uh, and this peace and love conversation is, while the right thing to do, very boring. So I do like the Jake Paul just embracing the chaos and, and being a bad person. That fucking rips. Uh, but I like that conspiracy theory. Like I, I like the idea of Jake Paul... Uh, just because Triller has been struggling so much to defeat TikTok, like it's just an unwinnable battle. They're instead just trying to turn into gladiator fights for vloggers that are becoming more irrelevant by the day. I like that. And I especially like the idea of Jake Paul sitting on the board of Triller with with Floyd Mayweather's hat on, sunglasses to hide both of his black eyes, and just saying, if you don't sue YouTubers who talk shit about me, I will leave. You're fired. That's great. I think that's fucking hilarious. But no, shout out to Ethan. I, 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 I've I always liked Ethan. And even when like the community turned their back on him a little bit, I kind of, I never really liked that. I never got on board with it. I like Ethan. I think his intentions are good. And uh, I think that, uh, that him standing up against this thing is a really selfless act because potentially it would be a lot cheaper, even if he wins, to just settle this case. But if he does settle, that sets a precedent in the legal system. So if he wins this battle, uh, then it sets a precedent of like, hey, these pay-per-view companies can't just sue people for talking about their content. Because it is, it is a weird thing where the law to me seems really fucking clear, like fair use... Uh, comment, and, comment and criticism, parody, satire, talking about something while viewing it, as long as you don't like show up the whole thing and then talk about it afterwards. If you show little clips and talk about it in between, that is fair use and it should be fair game. But the way these companies act is as if that law doesn't exist. And I think YouTube 
plays a really big role in that where YouTube will just enable these companies to do it. Like even if it is, even if it is legal, if I was to trash, uh, uh, like Luke Kidgel had this problem all the time where he used to do music reviews of music videos and he would trash the songs and trash the film clips and these companies would just hit him with copyright claims uh, and legally you could dispute them and win, but the uh, terms and conditions of YouTube would just be like, well, we're going to let him do it anyway. This is like a private decision for us to let these music companies disregard the law and you can make the videos legally, but they're going to take your money at site policy. Uh, so I really hate the idea of companies swinging their dicks around like that against like, you know, people who just have less resources. Like as, as much money as Ethan Klein has, he's not a multi-billion, multi-million dollar corporation like Triller is. So fuck those guys and I hope he wins because it'll be good for everyone. Um, another thing that I that I find incredibly amusing is, uh, geez, we're really, what what is this? It's This episode today is fucking drama alert. I am sorry to report that it is drama alert. And, and, and actually, you know what? It's not drama alert. I have no respect for drama alert. I only respect true online journalism and that is deaf noodles. So... Uh, <laughs> Today, I want to talk about uh, this, the, the, the Lana Rhodes and Mike, how the fuck do you say his last name? May, Malak? Malak. Malak? Well, spell it like that. How about that? Mate, Mike Malak. Mike Malak and Lana Rhodes' relationship is very funny. There's a real big trend of, of YouTubers just dating porn stars, and I think Raka Raka started it uh, when, when uh, was it Danny who was dating... Uh, what's their fucking name? Riley Reed. Riley Reed. Test. <laughs> he knows. Uh, Riley Reed. Yeah, right. Danny was dating Riley Reed, and that was a that was a, 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 a an enthralling relationship to watch crumble over Instagram stories. As a person who knows Danny, uh, that was incredibly uh, fun to watch the back and forth of of that relationship crumbling via Instagram stories, uh, which is always great to see. Just. Uh, I don't know. It's it really is just this big trend of like of like porn stars have kind of figured out that. I mean, this is kind of true of everything. No one makes money out of what they actually do. Like Riley Reid doesn't make most of her money out of porn that you'll see on Pornhub. She makes it all a fucking OnlyFans and merch. And the same thing is true of like Mia Khalifa and now Lana Rhodes. It's like the real the real career path is work your way up the Pornhub ladder. Uh, and then, and then you might fit it, you know, you do some, you do some amateur stuff, you'll do some point of view stuff, then you'll do some lesbian stuff, you do some threesome stuff, and then at the peak of your career, you'll do some double penetration, and then you'll retire, date a YouTuber, break up really publicly, and then live a really cushy light life just doing lingerie shit on OnlyFans. That seems to be the, uh, the career path of porn stars now, and good on them, it is a hustle. Uh, and uh, we're seeing Lana Rhodes is, is right in the retirement phase of this, as she's broken up with her YouTuber boyfriend, Mike Malak, uh, who, who I've, I don't know, um, but he is on the Logan Paul podcast, so I'm sure he's incredibly entertaining. Oh, he got fired? Fuck, what do you have to do to get fired from the Logan Paul podcast? Uh, talking shit. Talking shit about Logan Paul. That That is going to be the dumbest shit ever. Is like, I'm on, like, the dude, the podcast is called Impulsive. Like, if I was, if, if, if Luke and Lewis was called the Luke Kidgel Show featuring special guests and I was out there talking shit on Luke, I'd be the dumbest man alive. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Watch your mouth, Keelan. <laughs> Um, so they, they, they were dating and they've broken up publicly and, and in a very personally amusing way, uh, she has just leaked all of, all of the text, which is great here at, at Deaf Noodles, the podcast. Um, Deaf Noodles is, uh, it's all deleted from social media, but luckily Deaf Noodles, the, the autistic Keemstar has, uh, has come along here and, uh, he has them all here for us to, to have a look at. Um, and how they... <laughs> One of the reasons they broke up is Mike has sent Lana Rhodes a pro and cons list. Now, I don't want to turn into some gossip show, but I just have to talk about the pro and cons list because it is so fucking funny to me. Look, Like, just... How old is the dude? He's in his 30s. He's in his 30s. So, in, like, YouTuber years, he's 60. Uh, 36. 36, right. So, the man's, like, uh, about 10 years older than I am, and he's sending girlfriend's pros and cons lists like he's 14 that's awesome so here's 
the, the only reason I'm going through this pro and cons list is because we all know now that Lana Rhodes is single. So I'm here to weigh up the pros and cons of dating Lana Rhodes because I know there's a vacuum that potentially I could fill. But before that, I need to look at the pro and cons list, obviously. So pros and cons of dating Lana Rhodes uh, by Mike Malek, who dated Lana Rhodes. Pros, why I date you. The prettiest girl on earth, hands down. I would agree with that. She is quite a beautiful woman, but she does undeniably have a very vacant look in her eyes. Have you ever looked at a, a, a photo or a video of Lana Rhodes? She's gorgeous, but you look into her, her eyes and, and, and you're like, there's definitely no calculus going on in there. You know, like, <laughs> so, like every now and then, it's they, like you, you'll meet a girl that, and they're always lovely, but they're just like, there's just not much going on in there. And I say that as someone who isn't the smartest man alive. Sometimes you will, and it's it's it is usually in my experience, women and and men with Down syndrome that have this look, where they, it just doesn't seem like there's much going on there. And she does have that look, uh, but but I will still say I do think she is pretty. I'll agree with her. Him, extremely loyal in relationships. Okay, I mean I guess she'd be sick of playing the field, surely. Um, hardworking and successful. Yep, check. Wild sex appeal. Check. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, here's the full wild sex appeal. This is like an essay. This is great. Caring and attentive when I'm down and out. Yep, okay, that's another check. Jeez, this is actually looking quite good. I might have to send in an application. I feel compelled to save you from how the world sees and has seen you in the past, surround you with a loving family and a normal life. Not really a pro. That seems like a bit of a personality issue on Mike's part if he has, sees a girl and goes, I must save her. Um, shared love of travel food experience. Boring. P pretty solid. This is this is the funniest the, of all of them out of all the pros and cons. This is the funniest one. Pretty solid taste in music and then in brackets, decent. <laughs> like, what a, what a subtle, what a backhanded compliment. Pros of dating you. Pretty solid taste in music. Mm, decent. Don't, that doesn't make the list, dude. That's not a pro. If you're going to end it off with decent, not really a pro. Always have my back. And this, actually, no, this is my, this is the funniest one. Good for my business and networking. And then in brackets, see caveat. I imagine the caveat is you are, a, you have the contacts because you're a porn star. So everyone that I meet through networking, there's like a 39% chance that you fucked them. Why I don't date you? Okay, so look, honestly, before seeing the cons, I'm pretty pro dating Lana Rhodes. Uh, I'm filling out my application. Let's have a look at these cons. Why I don't date you. Major deal breakers that require deep and radical change. Well, that's a con, isn't it? That is a con. I love that he doesn't, list any of the deal breakers. I mean, that could be fucking anything. Also sickly obsessed with social normalities, even though everything in your life, everything about your life, everything in your life is... Uh, this guy can't spell. That's a con, honestly, of, of dating Mike Malak is the cunt can't spell. Also sickly obsessed with social normalities, even though everything in your life is outside the box. Then shaming me for my liberal thinking and approach to life. Another layer of hypocrisy. This is great. I love how the cons were sentenced, the pros were sentences and the cons are paragraphs. <laughs> that is, that, surely that's a red flag. Is if, if, if you're writing a pro and cons list, which by the way is actually quite a good thing to do for yourself. It's never something that you should send to something else, someone else. You, you write up a pro and cons list of dating a partner uh, and it helps you sort your mind out. Then sending it to the person, it becomes a weapon. So. It also needs to be noted that this was five pages long and she hasn't published everything. Oh, so this was five pages long. Yeah. And this, is a this, and this is just, this is what, one page? Hang on. So that means that, at least from what I'm seeing, I've seen all of the pros. The cons are five pages long and all of them are paragraphs. <laughs> That, okay, I, th I would look at my, uh, my fucking manifesto on why dating Lana Rhodes is bad and just go, maybe I should be single. <laughs> 
extremely needy when it comes time when it comes to time together. Be here by this is in quotes her saying this I guess. Be here by 9 p.m. or don't come at all, and unwilling to accommodate to make those times happen. Come to my house. I'm not coming there. This is just a bunch of quotes. Relatively un- unwilling to get involved with activities you know that I like, like gym, cycling, or other things I like to do, which I would have been more interested in doing together. Yeah, dude. You, that is not a couple's activity. Going to the gym and cycling is not a couple's activity unless she was already into that. Like, could you imagine if I looked at Jazz and was like, oh, you know what I think we should do or break up? Cycling. Get some fucking lycra, bitch, or you're single. That's not a group activity. That is something that you 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 find a person who already likes that and then you make friends with them despite them being annoying. That is what that activity is. Yeah, I used to have a gym friend. Fuck, he was annoying, but he was a gym guy. So it helped me go to the gym. And that was the only reason we had this friendship. And then I stopped going to the gym. Haven't seen him for years. All right, so that's the con paragraph list. And then we have, oh, minor issues that some would consider deal breakers. Okay, nice little threat here. It's a minor issue for me, but you're not going to find anyone else that could put up with this. Minor issues that some people would consider deal breakers that require habitual revision. This is great. This this is reading like uh, like all of the fucking um, teacher's notes I would get in my school report. Chewing with your mouth fully open, making slop noises. I've heard those before. Uh, <laughs> not not what she's eating though almost on purpose when i've told you a thousand times how disgusting it is plus numerous other social faux pas hey bro you can't be concerned with social faux pas while you're dating the mo- world's most famous porn star you're gonna have to give up on those no i'm actually with mike fuck all the other cons if you chew with your mouth open you're single that is gross i'm with mike on this i've totally turned around and then uh, she says there was a whole paragraph about him being upset about me not wanting to do three ways I mean, that's just, I mean, you you can't get angry at your porn star girlfriend for not wanting to do porn star shit. That's like dating a chef expecting you're going to get five-star Michelin meals when he's at home. You're getting McDonald's, all right? He doesn't want to work at home. That's all you're getting. I feel like everybody thinks that, like, dating a porn star would mean the best sex of your life. I don't think so. I think they're in retirement, you know? Like, like, I don't think many women who are dating footballers are getting like spear tackled when they when they play when they play together. I don't think that happens. I think they do that on the field and then they retire and then they're like, all right, I don't really do that anymore. I've done my rounds. That's what you're getting. So good on Mike Malak. Uh, pros and cons of listening to the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. Pro, very funny. Con, that whole segment. You have to. You might have to listen to. Uh, a 36-year-old man break up with his porn star girlfriend because I personally find it very amusing to read through it. He also cheated on her. He also cheated on her. That is great, isn't it? More than once. That's, I mean, that, like... The the, the danger of, of, like, doing that, especially when someone has a big profile, is her just just fucking everyone in the city. Because, like, what is she going to do? Ruin her reputation if she does that? Not really. That's sweet. So good on Lana Rhodes. Five pages long. That's that's sick. That's like a manifesto. If you, if you find yourself writing five pages about whether or not you should be single, you delete the document, you're single. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Dude, I haven't, the last time I wrote five pages was when I was writing my show. That's awesome. That means that he could like perform the pros and cons list for an hour. I would buy a ticket to that. That would be funny. That is fucking sick. Guys, this episode of the Speared Sundays podcast is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Best pube shaver in the game. I use it personally. I have been for almost a year now and uh, I'm never going back. Really good stuff. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use my code. Support the brands that support the show because that's how we keep this running. You know, uh, Keelan's $3 an hour. I can't afford that if you guys aren't buying the lawnmower. Uh, So please do cop it and use my code because it helps out the show and uh, keeps everything spinning. Uh, now, <clears throat> I have some new ad read copy that they've sent me that uh, I will be reading. And I think I think this one's a real converter. I think this is really going to sell you guys. <clears throat> Host to scream really loud. Ah! Ow! Oh my God! Fuck! 
or whatever comes to mind in brackets. Those are the screams I used to make when I would cut myself shaving before I knew about... I mean, that's not true. Like, if I, if I was in the shaver screaming my head off, I think that my girlfriend might open the door and check how I am. If that's how I'm using a shaver, even if it was a, a non-manscaped shaver, which they're all terrible compared to the lawnmower 3.0, I would say maybe it's maybe it's an issue with how you're handling it, and and you should you should definitely get a Manscaped 3.0, the, the lawnmower 3.0. Definitely get something from Manscaped, but also maybe learn how to use it. Um, uh, those are the screams I used to make when I would cut myself shaving before I knew about Manscaped. You need to try this out for yourself. The Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 has been beautifully designed to reduce those painful nicks and tugs. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SPEARS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code SPEARS. Always use the right tools for the job. Do not read. Host to talk about a time where he cut his balls grooming. I'm out of stories. You're going to have to come up with something else, guys. Um... The waterproof technology allows you to shave in the shower too. And uh, when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. Dude, That's act the battery is actually fucking sick. I haven't charged mine for like three weeks. Three, four. Well, I don't I didn't use it. I think I use it like once every two or three weeks maybe. Probably three weeks. And I haven't charged it for like three sessions. So that what, like six Five, six weeks or so, I haven't had to charge it. So that's awesome. Uh, I don't know where the charger is. I need to find it uh, because I, I assume I have to charge it at some point. But the point is the battery lasts for ages and it's really fucking good and it supports the show. So manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. It's a banger deal and it's really good stuff that I use regularly. Um, and so does Keelan when I need him to shave my ass. So get it. Um, or else. Okay. What else do we have here? Oh, it's, I guess, you know, come up at like 40 minutes here. I guess uh, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. If you uh, have any life advice questions, send them through to podcast at lewspears.com. I am uh, running low, which I don't know why, because the podcast is like bigger than it's ever been, but I feel like I'm getting less emails. So definitely send them through if you have any questions or want me to talk about something. Send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. All right. I made someone accidentally shit the bed. <laughs> hey, Lewis. I hope you're going well. I may have screwed up. What happened was I was going to a party and how it usually works is I buy drinks for the party and everyone pays me back. I brought over the drinks, but one of the people in the group grabbed two of the bottles. Uh, two of the bottles. Can you please put, put some fucking punctuation in your emails? You don't even have to use a lot. Just put, just don't use none. This kind of sent me a fucking paragraph. There's not a single comma, full stop paragraph at all in the whole email. You don't have to spell well. You don't have to use the, all of the correct punctuate, punctuation, but you have to use some. You don't have zero. Don't send me a fucking paragraph that's one sentence that doesn't even have a full stop at the end of it or a capital letter at the start. Fuck, man, how am I supposed to read this? It sounds like a great story, but it looks like word vomit. I would buy drinks for the party. Everyone pays me back. I brought over the drinks, but one of the people in the group grabbed two of the bottles. Not the first time and went home. I'm making up punctuation here. This is not how he's written it. I'm going to have to improvise as I read it. I asked him about it. He denied it. So I got a bit angry. This is all one sentence. I got angry. And since I know exactly what he drinks... I went and bought laxatives. And at the next party, <laughs> good, I dumped all of the laxatives into the bottle of JD that I knew he was going to take. But here, okay, so he was a frequent fe fe fever of your bottles of JD, right? So you trapped him with the next time. I knew he was going to take the bottle, but here's where I fucked up. That night he had a girl with him and he took her back to his place. And because he drank the JD, he shit himself in front of the girl he was with. Am I the bad guy right now or is he? I would say that you're not the bad guy, but you are very stupid and you suck at writing emails. Please include at least even one comma or a single full stop would have made my job so much easier. But after saying that, I think you're a fucking genius also. You know, like you're not very book smart, but... Uh, this is a very, that's hilarious. I reckon you should fucking tell him. I reckon you just go, yeah, man, 
uh, you kept stealing my drinks, so I put laxatives in one of them. Uh, so if you shit yourself, that means that you're a thief. My plan was for no one to drink that bottle, but you stole it from me, so there's your consequence. I reckon, depending on how well you know the guy, you just own up to it and just go, yep, that was me. Because how does he respond? Like, if you gave him the bottle of JD and you're like, here, man, this is for you, you're the bad guy. But that's not what happened. You put laxatives in there, and I assume intended for no one to drink from that. He stole from you and paid the price. So I think that you should just fucking tell him. I think that is absolutely hilarious and I'm all for it. Well done. That's great. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for uh, listening and watching to the show. Uh, If you want uh, to listen to the rest of this episode, I will be continuing on on Patreon. That episode is up right now on Patreon. Just Google Lewis Spears Patreon. And there's a bunch of other like podcast exclusive episodes where I get a little bit more wild uh, and just interact a little bit more personally with you guys as well. So if you want more Spears Sundays, if that wasn't enough for you, the Sunday supplement is up right now on Patreon. Go and get it. And uh, next week, I know this week was just like all of just trending topics and newsy type stuff. Uh, not every episode is going to be like that. But I was like, ah, I'm just going to get all of that shit out of the way this episode so that next episode, which we have to pre-record, I can talk about what I've been up to in my day and be funny in that way because otherwise I will just talk about news that happened two weeks ago. So we did it all in this episode. So I hope that is fine. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the show. It's free. Fuck you. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Um, I'll be in the Gold Coast absolutely suffering. And uh, stay tuned for that episode because that's going to be a fucking riot. Anyway, I'm going to continue on here for Patreon. Jump on there if you want to catch that. And uh, I will see you next week. Hope you have a shit one. Bye. Buy my shit. Buy my shirts. Buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit. Buy my shirts. Buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit. Buy my shirts. Buy my merch and no one gets hurt. Buy my shit. Buy my shirts. Buy my merch and no one gets hurt.